This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com. My brother Jack. Oh my God, we back. Let's go. All is go. Just getting started, baby. Just getting started. Man, welcome back to a special COVID-19 satellite edition of All the Smoke with my brother Stack Five. Good to see you. My brother, what's happening? Good to be seen. Good and man, we got seen. a special guest, man. This is a, is a honor. Uh, man, we grew up Legend. idolizing this guy. One of the, My the, guy. The, the greatest to ever do it. One of the most dangerous men in the world ever to touch a football. Um, Deion Sanders, man, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Man, please. I, I, it's so funny, man. I just feel like I know y'all. You know how you just, <laughs> there's some brothers out there. You never really got down with them, but you know them, man. know them. Same yeah. way, yeah. Y'all are those type of brothers, man, that to do. Like, I, I would have been right on in there with y'all. I might not have done everything y'all did, yeah. but I would be right, <laughs> <laughs> right in there with y'all, man. Yeah. I got love for y'all jokers, man. man we, we appreciate, appreciate that. that. We, we, same we come thing. from the same crowd. Yeah, same thing, yes, man. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Yes, well, I mean, Lord. we're in a we're in a time that we've never seen before. You know, we're in this uh, this pandemic right now. Um, how are you and the family holding it down, being in the house with all them boys all day, every day? <laughs> See, I, I got a city swag, but really, man, I'm a country boy. Yeah. So I'm out here on you know acreage, hundreds of acres, man. I got the lake right here, mm. the gym back Talk here, you know, the basketball court. I can't even get up right now because. My sons was hooping, all of them, and we had some of the other fellas over. And, you know, you can only talk junk to me for so long, <laughs> you know. And then I got to get out there and try to put it down. My back on went out halfway through the first game, and I couldn't quit. <laughs> so I couldn't quit. I had to fight it out. Then I went to, I ain't got up since last Friday. I've been in the bed since then. I ain't been able to work out of my youngest son going to walk in my room the other night talking about, you know what, Daddy? I lost a lot of respect for you. <laughs> I, 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 I blocked your shot. I blocked your shot twice, and you ain't give me nothing. I was like, son, man, go on with that bull jump, man. <laughs> so I'm hurt right now, baby. I'm hurt right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love it, man, because I'm a, I'm a, you know, just like you guys, that's one thing I admire about, amongst the many things I admire about you guys. You guys are fathers first, man, and I love it. Right. So just having my sons around and my kids, man, I, I, I love this time. Right. I'm yeah. not happy with what it's done to our country, but yeah. I love this time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of fathers, uh, uh, like myself, uh, you coach your son. And yeah. to me, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, you know, being able to play 15 years in professional sports, I still never got the feeling that I got seeing my, my sons excel and be happy and love what they're doing in sports, coaching them gave me a special appreciation and a feeling. Uh, is that similar with you? And to it, what, it is. That, before you start, doing, I want to give y'all credit, too, because, like, with me, I have two boys, too. And my boy, my, my youngest son, want me to be more of his homeboy. He don't want me to be more of his teacher. <laughs> so so I got I to gotta, I gotta give you props to having that, you and Matt, but to having that relationship with y'all sons, for them to be able to, to be able to take advice and, and be coached by y'all. Because my brother, my son just want me to be his homeboy. He don't want me to tell him nothing about basketball. <laughs> You, you know what, those like you probably, you probably like Joe Jackson or James Evans when it comes to coaching. You, you probably, you, that, you know, that's probably why. And I know Matt got a little bit of that in him. See, I'm a little bit of both. Yeah. I, I go hard on him. I go hard. We was just telling stories the other day. I'm not lying to y'all. And this is a basketball story. I was coaching my kids in basketball, and Shador, my youngest one, I was so mad. I think he was about seven, eight years old. He played like garbage so bad. <laughs> I saw this joke in the back seat of the car, man. I'm driving home. This joke slid in the middle, not on the side. I'm looking through the rear view. I said, man, take off that dirty uniform. You don't deserve that, man. I made him ride home with some drawers. <laughs> <laughs> 
I go, because I go hard like that now. I've grown and matured a little more. Yeah. So football wise, I'm a little more calm. And I coach offense because all my life I, I was a defensive back. So I studied offense. And so my mind intellectually is an offensive mind. So I coach him uh, on offense. And I, I can mess with Shallow a little bit on defense. But Shallow, Shallow's that one kid that's going to always have you on your knees, man. We all have that one, man. Shallow's that yeah. one, man. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about yeah. how good you how you, you told us you won what three state state championships in a row and uh, yeah. th- they had yeah. to remove y'all from the <laughs> from the league so you could get that. Yeah, they'll, they'll, kick, they'll, they'll kick us out the whole league. Trying try to say they weren't going to accept our application. How you don't accept someone's application to be in the league? So that's a, a slick way of saying we're not going to let this brother win four straight state yeah. titles with his kids. Right. You know, and, and we constantly putting kids into college and getting them to the next level. That's what it's so about. now we independent and we got to travel all over the country to play but i love it man i'm gonna coach college football probably next oh, year uh, i don't know but yeah probably next year i'm getting ahead of myself because i don't want none of my kids on our team to panic and they parents to panic coach prime is still gonna be there y'all <laughs> i know y'all watching all, all, all smoke <laughs> i'm gonna be there next year yeah yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's special, i, I can't wait coach. to see that yeah coaching your kids yeah, is the last. Do it. Talk to us a little man. I love it, yeah. man. Talk to us a little bit about the current climate um, of the NFL and and your particular thoughts on, on Tom Brady uh, going to Tampa Bay. He's one of those guys you think that you know he's in that uniform for life, and that's just what it is, and it didn't end up that way. Well, the thing about it, it we we all have been journeymen, all, all three of us, and we we understand that sometimes it's just time to go. Yep. And as bad as we want to see him end up with New England, it was just that time. You can't fault Belichick. You can't fault Kraft. You can't fault Tom. Sometimes it's just just that time. And Tom, uh, and I know him personally, man, and he keeps in contact with my shorty because he's a quarterback. But Tom is a great guy, and I think it's this time in life where he wants another challenge. We men thrive on challenges, man. You put a challenge in front of a dog and he's going to hunt. And yeah. Tom needs a challenge in going to Tampa Bay, taking them from one of the doormats of our game to the, be those dogs that he um, assumes that he's going to uh, make them come about. I, I love it. And it just energizes our game. You got four really good quarterbacks, man, in that, uh, that NFC South, man. And I cannot wait to see what he does because I wouldn't bet against Tom Brady on anything. I'd never bet against Tom Brady. Ain't nah, no way in the world. I wouldn't bet against him either, and I kind of look at it like this, Dion. I kind of like this, Prime. He doing the same kind of same thing LeBron did. Like, LeBron's yeah. so great, I, he had to challenge himself. I'm going to go back to yeah. Cleveland. I'm going to try to be one in Cleveland. Then I'm going to go to L.A. Mm-hmm. and try to get L.A. back. Like, yeah. when you that good, and I know you know because you're one of the greats, you got to find different ways to challenge yourself. You, you do, and you plan against yourself. You plan against your own ghost. He yeah. ain't playing against nobody else in the league and no quarterbacks to formally play the game. <laughs> He's playing against himself. Yeah. And can I top what I do? Because the expectation for Tom Brady and, and when he touches the field, it elevates everything, man. Mm-hmm. And I love it. Mm-hmm. And I'm biased. I think we have the best professional game there is. I know y'all with the NBA, but I, I feel like we got the best game. And in this climate, I love what's going on right now, especially with everything being down right now because of this virus. The, the, the all the trades, all the, the free agency is keeping us alive because we don't have yeah, no sports. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's where so the I, NBA. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad this ain't happened, man. In, in football season, mm-hmm. boy, God, yeah. I don't want it to have a period. But right. I'm so happy this this bull junk ain't going down it's no tough, football season. Especially because I mean, this is the time right now. This is you know you, you get March Madness is is coming to a championship point right now. Uh, you're revving up for the NBA playoffs. Baseball is getting going. Like, to know that, like, we don't have nothing, no kind of sports to turn and watch is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, i tell you what. I cannot wait till it's over because I want to see the divorce rate. I want to see the teenage <laughs> pregnancy. He said pregnancy. I, I want to see the crime statistics. All the statistics are going through the roof. Man. I guarantee you. See, a lot of these parents now, you see how bad little man man is now. You've been tripping, not calling right. that teacher back. Now you're getting a chance to deal with little man man. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to the teachers, man. We I, was talking about that earlier. Oh, shout, shout out, out to, to the, the teachers. The, man, these, these parents are going crazy now with these little bad kids. Is, man. <laughs> they, they, hey, hey, it's tight. It, it's tight. Let me tell you something. You spent that reel online the other day. You, you, yeah. you, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking yes, about. Yeah. So, man, don't please. 
please don't let them stop you from putting your foot on the gas and, 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 and dispensing the truth, man, because a lot of brothers, see, we know because we have been there. Matt, we've been there. We have been there. And we go through it, man. Yeah, yeah we've been there. Yeah, we definitely have been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, I want to pivot a little bit. I know you, <clears throat> he, he's, you, you mentor him, so to speak, uh, Antonio Brown, and, and, and kind of give yeah. him a little guidance and experience. And tell me what, what that relationship is like and where you think he is, and, and if you feel like he uh, has a possibly another chance to play. He's like the prodigal son to me, man. That's that's my son. That that I love him to life, and uh, I feel like uh, he's going to play again at some point. I think he had to 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 go up that hill and look and see that uh, he, you didn't get up there by yourself. He had to be humbled a bit, and and he is. And now he's getting back. He back to the family, back to the kids, back to the work ethic, back to everything that got you where. Um, you once were and he's focused man. He's refocused. I just spoke to him I think a couple of days ago and he just wants another opportunity mm -hmm. to get in the game It ain't about no money ain't about the fame ain't about the fortune See this man truly loves the game and I hope to God that he gets another opportunity to play I foresee him getting enough opportunity to play because uh, I Know he got some legalities he got to deal with but once he gets past that I can't wait to see him. Uh, I love underdog story, man. I do. I do. And all, all of do. us is taking We all do. Man, we've all taken a left, man. Ain't, I, ain't nobody watching this broadcast or on this broadcast on, on stage right. We all have took a left somewhere in life, man. Yeah. So we just got to get back right. And I think he's going to get back right. When it comes to talent, I, it, it I is, can't. It, go ahead, Jack. I can't, I can't relate. I can't. I really, I tell people this all the time. It's hard for me to even conversate or relate to somebody who ain't never been through nothing. Because I know at the end right. of the day, the things that I've been through before I even got to the NBA made me and gave me the strength and the knowledge to be able to make it through the ups and downs of the NBA. Not being drafted, not really giving a fast chance in front, then going through my two incidents off the court. So I totally can relate to everything he going through because we are not perfect. And as athletes, especially as great as, as, as AB is, people expect you to go through everything perfect. You know what I mean? They expect you to be perfect. So I salute A.B. on living his, living his trials and tribulations on the Internet for everybody to see, but also bouncing back from it and taking the responsibility for everything he's been through. I salute him. Yeah, yeah, I, I salute him. I just want him to get another opportunity to finish strong, man. Yeah. I think we all deserve to put a period and an exclamation mark at the end of yeah. our yeah. sentence. Mm -hmm. We all deserve yeah. it. No, I, think, I, I think you touched on it. I think it's a situation where... We're the 1%, you know, and now more than ever, our lives are a fishbowl. So guys have probably yeah. gone through similar, you know, situations along their career, but it just wasn't for the world to see. Granted, he put most of it out there, but still at the same time. So I think, like you said, I think he's humbled himself. He kind of realized how much he loves football. And when we talk about talent, you can't argue with talent. Well, he's still a top yeah, two or three receiver yeah. in, in the game. You know what I mean? In the so, game. We hope that he does get another chance. I'd love to see that he's doing right by the family and kids because, like we said, we're all fathers here, and that's what's first and foremost. you got to be right. You know, your outside life, I mean, obviously we deal with a lot of distractions, but for you to be the best you, your outside life has to be tight and secure down, and you'll be able to see that in your performance and your life as a whole. So we definitely hope that he can find his footing and get through the legal trouble. You know, not to make any excuses for him. Hopefully get through that legal trouble uh, the right way. And, and like you said, get a chance to go out because he has all-time great type talent. Hey, man, I've hey, never man, seen hey, a public success with that private struggles. I've never at, seen at it. All, at all. And I, I, I wanted to touch on this, too, because like what Dion was just talking about when I was about the video I made of the day. A lot of times as black men, too, or people don't understand, we get to this success, and a lot of us grow up without a father in the household. So a lot of stuff as far as raising, raising kids, dealing with the money, dealing with the success, we have to learn this shit on our own. And you yeah. have to learn from experience. You have to learn by fucking up. So just because we make it, <laughs> and, and just because we make it and make all this money, you see all these houses and stuff, we've been through a lot, and we had a lot of fucking up. We made a lot of mistakes to, to get to where we are. So people don't understand, especially not having a father, you have to learn a lot of stuff as you go through life. And, you know, a lot of people be in that situation. Mm -hmm. Man, a fool broke is going to be a fool rich. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. Straight up. Uh, you know, uh, a drunk broke is going to be an alcoholic rich. Yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. And, 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 and it keeps on going until you mature and, uh, and able to play that role, man. So not until we probably start kissing 30 uh, uh, or the mid 30s that we really start to look at that real picture and get that thing right, man. Mm -hmm. So the young brother has time. And I just hate 
that we just want to stone people, man, and yeah, crucify yeah. people and not understand, hey, man, get a brother a chance, man. He's going to come back. He's going to be all right. Yeah. He's just going through the storm right now. Everybody goes through the storm. And he just got to keep going. And if you got, so the best quarterback in the, you got the best quarterback in the league vouching for you, how can you not be a great? Yeah. Yeah, because he, he saw his heart. See, I know his heart. And, and the things that he's done is not who he is. Mm-hmm. It's the things that he's done. Mm-hmm. And I love that part about the young fellow, man. Yes, sir. Talk to us a little bit about your, your, your impact on the game that I think still exists today because you were the flyest most – I mean, outside of your game, you were fly before fly was fly in sports so with the jewelry <laughs> and the glasses. You had the motherfucking Jerry Curl drip like my pops had. It like... looked wet, but it was dry. <laughs> that thing looked wet, <laughs> but it was dry. That shit wasn't wet. Hey, hold on. I, I didn't pull off the wet look, but the dry, but it was dry. Who Boys, is Nexus? A, a product called Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know what he's talking about. Hey, 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 let me tell y'all something. Yeah, I'm going to tell y'all something that I never told nobody. Then this this is first because I got love for y'all. You you remember the headband that I used to wear around the neck? It wasn't intended to be worn around the neck. It was to stop the... It was... No, no. I used to wear it on the head like y'all do in the NBA. Yeah. Because the curl juice are getting my eye. (laughs) I'm not lying. And then when I put the helmet on, it messed around and slipped down to the neck. (laughs) And it just became fashionable. So I looked and said, you know what? Let me just roll with yeah. this. Song. Go, go. Yeah, that's how that, Hey, that's how that happened, Yo. though. I'm not lying. That's Yo. true story. That's how the, that's how the headband was worn around the neck. I never told nobody else that in my life. It. Y'all the first ones to get that uh, truth. So my my dad, that's the my truth, dad, though. my dad had a dripper. My dad used to have the towel around his neck so the shit didn't get on his clothes. So shit, I, I, that's what oh, I thought you looked like. Yeah, he had a real though. drip. No, dog, no, uh, dog. I, I was offended. When uh, Coming to America came out and they were sitting their heads on the couch, man, in that spot. I was offended by that, man. I was offended by that movie. I really was. Anybody who had a curl back then, it was talking shit about you, huh? But, but talk hey, to but us. But you know what, man? I'm a Florida, I'm a Florida right. boy, man. And you know, we, we, we high on swag. We high on talking junk, you know. Oh, and, but the, but the, the, the lie of it all, man, and y'all ain't going to believe this when I tell you, but it's 100% true. I never talked junk on the field, man. I never spoke to my opponents. I never really? talked to anybody I ever played. Never, dog. I spit game to the media. Yeah. Like I said, you know what? I'm the best thing since peanut butter and jelly. I'm this. I'm, you know, you kick it to me. You're gonna get. You're gonna hear the band playing in a minute. You keep messing. I would say stuff like that. Yeah. I never talked to my opponents, man. Never in my life. That's what's. Up. But I had the, the mantra of I talk junk all of it, and I never did. So where did it become? It, 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 it's, hold on, hey man, hold on. Got, is, is that story ahead. true about um, you hopping out the limo? And, and running a four, what a four two? It, it's always a, it's always a little truth to every lie. It's a little truth. <laughs> it's a little truth to every yeah. lie. I, 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 I did, I did, I did catch the rabbit that day. I ran my butt off. You caught the but rabbit. I didn't leave in the. I caught the rabbit. I ain't leaving the limo that day. I went. I did what everybody else did. It was normal. But uh-huh. I left right after I ran because it was. What am I gonna lay there and put two twenty five and do that? If I ain't nobody laying across my arms in no game. Yeah, yeah. Me bench press. And I ain't no high jump. Why am I high jumping for? I ain't got a high jumping okay so i i wasn't doing none of the foolish stuff at the comeback yeah i just went there to run my party because i was the number one cat coming out at my position so why would i risk that and chance that i had nothing to prove in no comeback you had all your jewels on? i just went there to put in work no actually i wore a suit because i went for business <laughs> i went in there for business i went in there i went in there i went in there suited and booted that's my son. I went in there suited and booted, man. So as I went for business, and I can remember when I was in the big room with all the players, a uh, dude, uh, somebody from the league came over to me. He said, "Excuse me, sir, there are no agents allowed inside." I said, "No, partner, I'm a player. I promise you, I'm a for player." Life. <laughs> I said, "I'm a player." I ain't say player. I say I'm a player. I'm a player. I'm a player. <laughs> I'm a player. With an A, yeah, no Yeah, I wore ER. a suit to the combine, man. Yeah. Ain't no ER. A, hey, play up. Mm. I wore a suit to the combine, man. Tough. I went for business. Tough. You played for both of our favorite teams. I think, did you win a championship with Dallas? Yeah, And yeah. with the, man, and with the Niners. Did he? 
Yeah. Yeah, we won one with the 49ers, and the, then yeah. we went over to Dallas so, to let them know. So Jack is yeah. a Dallas fan. I'm a Niner fan. What was it like playing in those times? Yeah. You played with two great, I mean, Aikman, Emmett, Michael Irvin, and you went over yeah, and played with, with Steve and Jerry, John. Talk to us. Well, my finest place I ever played was Atlanta. That was home. You know, of when course. somebody drafts you, that's that's your home. That's your that's your blood, man. Like Atlanta drafted me, so I'm forever in debt. And I loved Atlanta, but they wasn't uh they didn't have the expectation of winning. And I was a winner and I wanted to win. So when I was a free agent, they ain't even offer me, man. Mm. They just wow. let it ride out. So I ended up um, getting ready to go to Miami. I was getting ready to go to Miami because I went on a little tour. It's like a little bidding tour. Everybody was trying to put it, see who's going to get primed. And uh, I can remember getting ready to go to the Dolphins. I even had Dolphins cleats made. Like like Nike had made my Dolphins cleats. And they said, where you going? I said, I'm going to go on over to uh, Miami. I'm going to do the Dolphins thing. I went and met with Eddie DiBarlo, man. And he said, you want to do this? I said, yeah. Yeah, I want to do it. So we even had a handshake agreement. I got on a plane and went back. Before I landed, before I landed, I think Bledsoe had hit the Dolphins with about 330 yards passing. So they was blowing my phone up. Now they want to do the deal. Now they want to come up with the money. But I was always been a man of my word. If I say it, it's going to be that. So I had already gave Eddie DiBarlo my word. So I went to San Francisco, man. And I remember the first day of practice going in there, uh, me with the head coach. He's like, we have no individuals on the team. You, you know, you got to coincide with what everybody else does. Like, it kind of offended me. Because you, have, you haven't done your homework, you was expected to get prime, and I, I introduced you to Dion. I'm trying to show you who I really am. You know, prime just comes out on Sundays, man. <laughs> that's just my marketing. That, that's, just who, that's just what I did to get my paper. So, man, I go out on the practice field. Jerry got on red tights. Ricky Waters got on black tights. This other kid. And I said, like, well, I thought we was a team. <laughs> I thought we were a team. I thought everybody did the same thing. So they kind of rubbed me the wrong way, man. But we, we put in some work that year. And we won the Super Bowl, and that was one of the best years individually I think I've ever had. And I loved it. But I just was empty, man. I was empty. After we won the Super Bowl, man, I went right home. First one out the locker room. First one in the hotel room. I ain't even go out club. I ain't even go kick it. I was just sitting on the edge of my bed like, dang, that ain't, that ain't what I thought mm. it was. Mm-hmm. I knew right then I needed a challenge, man. Mm. So I needed a challenge. So then that's why that took me to Dallas. Mm. I wanted to go prove I could get y'all there. Now I'm going to go get y'all back there. Mm-hmm. I wanted to prove that. Mm-hmm. Did you thank him for that, Jack? I, yeah, so. I mean, yeah. I'm going to thank him now. But I appreciate it because I've been a I've been a Cowboy fan since a baby. But you well, also played in, in San Francisco. I think you played with somebody from my hometown named uh, Tim McKayer. Hey, let me tell you something. That, it was in Atlanta. In Atlanta. You played it? Yeah. Play with- Tim was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Tim was crazy, man. My guy. I ain't seen this, I ain't seen this fool. I ain't seen this fool since since we played. Tim was a trip, man. I, I remember I, a trip. Yeah. I remember your man still. I, I remember man playing with his cat. And we had a great year. I think I had like seven picks. He made a hat, made had six. And every time he picked it, he, he brought it. I used to say, hey, man, when you play blackjack, the only way you win is you get 21. You get that ball to 21, some good things happen. Yeah. So every time people got a pick, they got it to 21, and good things happen. Right. He get a pick and run all the way across the field and pitch me the ball, and we house that thing. Yeah, but Tim, yeah. man, I remember I was trying to blow him up so he could make the Pro Bowl with your boy. And we was on the interview, and I, they say, what you like about Tim's game? Tim's game. I said, well, Tim does this, he does this, Tim does this. They say, well, Tim, what you like about Prime game? He's like, well, uh, uh, he ain't better than me. Just, Nigga, what's wrong? What is wrong with you, man? Dog, I almost swung doing the interview. I'm not lying, man. I'm like, this dude flipped out on me, man. I could not believe that, man. Oh, that's crazy. Man. Yeah, hey, you know, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't never met him, and I heard a lot of stories just like that about him. I know, I, yeah, I, I know that, his brothers and everybody, but he from my hometown. But I heard the same type of stories yeah. about him, man. Yeah, man, he had a little jealous spirit in there, man, which I don't know why. You know, it, it was all good, but that, that's what he was. All good. It was a trip. Who was uh, who was oh, your favorite man. matchup? Who was the one Jerry, guy you man, looked forward Jerry, to? Mike, oh, man. man, you know. Jerry, Michael, Jerry Rice, Michael Irvin, all of them, man, because I was I was coming to see him. You know, it wasn't that it wasn't back then. We 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 went to see the main dog, the dog on dog, the dogs on dog, like like it yeah. used to be back in the day in the NBA. Dog guard the dog. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I don't like it now. Like LeBron, I want to see you with Kawhi. You know, yeah. I like I like to see. I want to see dog on dog. That's what you selling me on TV. I want to see that. And it was me and Jerry got down. Me and Mike got down. Now they selling me dreams that I don't get to see. Yeah, they are. Don't sell me the dream. I want you to get man. Mike put in work with everybody. Okay. You seeing you seeing the Bulls? You was gonna see Mike. Mm-hmm. You was gonna see Kobe. Mm-hmm. You know, you was gonna see the dogs. Mm-hmm. Dog on dog. Yeah, it's a little different game now. You got to understand, see, my favorite sport is basketball, fellas. I got the nickname Prime from basketball. Please tell me that's, about that. How, that's tell how, how that happened. Ooh, you talk about that curl. That curl looked wet when it was dry, dribbling up down the coat. That thing was bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was bouncing. Hey, 24.6 before they invented the three. Hey, so man, hey, if they would have had the three. Hold on, hold on, Prime. You know what you sound like? Shannon, Ooh, sure. you sound like your boy, man. Man, Shannon, too, I saw that episode. Shannon too big, first of all, to be talking about he got buckets like that. Shannon too, ain't nobody, you ain't never seen nobody that big get buckets like that. He ain't get no buckets. I was all state, averaged 24.6. Ooh, Again, okay. and the threes were not implemented. So I tell myself, if the threes were implemented, that might have been 34, 35. <laughs> <laughs> I had 17 dunks, you know. I counted the dunks. Oh, I had 17 God. dunks as well. I counted the and dunks. And I was all state. I counted the dunks. <laughs> I was all state, though. All state football, all state basketball, oh. and I got drafted by the Reds in baseball, man. But basketball was it for me. That's what I love. My high school coach told me later on he hit every letter I got because he didn't want me to pursue basketball. Really? Wow. But I love basketball. Oh, I love basketball. That was it, man. Every every home I've had, I've had a basketball court in it. Interesting. Interesting. So, so I so, love I love so, the so game. So in high school, when you when you used to do punts and kickoffs, the whole stadium standing up, think you taking it back every time. No, I played quarterback, man. I, I, I played quarterback. Man, I was a buck 50 in high school, dog. Oh, so you weren't returning punts I was a buck high 50. No, no, I played quarterback. I, I returned punts probably probably my sophomore year. But it, in uh, the last two years, I was quarterback and safety. I played both ways, never came off the field. Mm-hmm. But no, man, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't return. I, the reason I started returning punts at Florida State, I'm not lying to you, dog. At Florida State... Like, special teams is everything. Like, if you're a defensive player, you play defensive special teams. Offense, you play offense. Mm-hmm. We was lined up. To, Florida State was notorious back then of blocking kicks. But like, punt block was everything. So we had a long line. They had a mat laid out. I mean, a real mat, thick, like a, like, like a little ballet or gym mat. And the dude's supposed to jump, lay out, the punter kick the ball. You try to block it and lay out flat. And that's how you was a punt block. The dude right before me, dog, I'm not lying. He kicked the ball. Man, the dude missed the ball. The punter kicked him in the chin, split his chin wide open, blood everywhere. And I'm next. I look at this bull junk. I said, Coach, look at man. I'm going to go back there and do my thing. All right, I'm pretty good at this. Get the ball to me. I'm, I'm pretty good at this. He said, well, go back there. I'm pretty good at this. That's how I became the punt returner, dog. Oh, man. <laughs> Somebody had to get their chin split. And the rest split. is history. Somebody had to get their chin split. Man, man. That, dude, man that dude got about 10 stitches, man. Split his chin wide open. You, I just saw that. I'm cool. Oh, no. I'm cool. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to go back here, coach. Yeah. I'm going to go back here and, and handle this. Oh, man. And the rest is history. Was there, any, the rest is was there anybody that you could admit or you remember that busted your ass? In football. That wasn't no busting prime, man. It wasn't no busting prime. It wasn't no busting prime, man. It wasn't no busting prime. 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 Now, no now prime, Jerry, man. Jerry and Mike Irvin made me really work. work. I had to be on my game. I had to be on my game. Me and Jerry had some battles. Yeah, hell you know? yeah. We, we had some real battles because... You know the ball coming to him at least 10. Right. Mm-hmm. And I got to win. I got to win. I got to win at least six of those. Mm-hmm. I can't, you know, you can't break even with Jerry Rice. You can't do that. You got to win. Mm-hmm. So we had some real battles, but it wasn't no, and anybody who's watching this right now, you ain't got no memory of somebody getting the best of prime. You ain't got no memory. It ain't nothing like that. It ain't, it ain't no videos. It ain't no, <laughs> it ain't no footage. Dude, I was so I was so anal like that. I didn't play that bull junk at practice. I ain't play it. I didn't play it at the Pro Bowls. We went to the Pro Bowls, and you know, you're supposed to take it easy. I'm not taking it easy because if you get me over here, you're going to think you could get me back over there. I'm not doing it. 
So I'm going to handle you here because I don't want you to have that mental edge and want nowhere in the world. I wasn't going to let it happen. And I practiced like it was a game at all times, man. I love that. You, you got an old, old saying that I, that I held on to. You the first person I heard say it. You look good, you play good, they pay good. <laughs> <laughs> you look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. You play good, they, they pay, pay good. good. They pay good, you live good. That's, that's it. That's, that's it. back in the day. And that's I said, it. a play don't care who make it. A play don't care who make it. Yeah. So it might as well be me. Yeah. It might as well be Talk me. To him, the isms. But, hey, what if, yeah. hey, hey, I remember one time, uh, the slap boxing match you had with Andre Risen. Talk to us about that. Yeah. You were slap boxing the shit out of each other. Man, let me tell you something. That's one of the most <laughs> disappointing times in my career. It really is. The reason is because I love that brother with all my heart. Like, that was my teammate, right. and That was my dog. Right. And the reason all this come about is because I left him. I left him. That, that's how it all started. I left. And it wasn't no, hey, dog, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to leave go to Frisco. I'm out. It wasn't nothing like that. They didn't even offer me a contract. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, I was a baseball player, too. So time football was over. I'm gone. Yeah. You know, I had two weeks after the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl usually was the first weekend of February. I got two weeks now. I'm in spring training in baseball. So I'm out. So it ain't no bye. I see you later and all that. I'm out doing my other thing. So when I left, it wasn't no time to, hey, my brother, you know, I'm out. I'm about to go do this old thing. And that was a rival. San Francisco was a rival of ours. Mm -hmm. And when I left, it hurt him. And instead of us talking about it like men, Andre started talking to the press and a couple mm -hmm. other teammates start talking through the media. So now, now you trying me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Instead of us talking, I'm like, all right, all right. Now you know I know. Like I know, <laughs> I know what I know. All right, I know what I know. And I studied my butt off, man. I prepared my butt off, man. I studied all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we went at it. And he, I was sitting up there one foot back, you know, I used to change one foot back, so I'm going to rush you. Uh, I keep you thinking. Most cornerbacks are at the mercy of the receivers. I flipped that whole game. Now, you at the mercy of me because you don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a, a sprinter stance, and I'm going to rush you. I'm going to ease back. And he came at me, and we went at it, and next thing you know, we swing it. The, the funny thing about the whole thing, dog, how we ain't get thrown Ooh, at the game? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Word, word, Unbelievable. Word. Word. I, I, no, how we ain't thrown at the game? Somebody asked me that. I said, I well, get suspended. Yeah, but yeah, but you know, in this day and time, we'd have been thrown out the game, oh, thrown man. out for at least uh, three, four weeks, man. But we ain't get thrown out, and I just baited them, baited them, baited them, and I made a big play, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. But I, I hate that we went to that point. Like we've been after that game, even during the end of the game, we were back time. No question. We were still, yeah, we was talking during the game, like. Like, we, we had healed it. We got it all out of us, and we healed it even before the end of that That's game, dope. man. But I love that brother, That's man. Dope. But that hurt my heart. That we, shouldn't have, we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't have got down like that. Well, compare today's game to when you play because, I mean, everybody is protected now. Uh, I think as a defensive player, uh, something you're Different taught game, completely to do as a youngster, you have to completely take it out of your mind. I see some guys getting Different hurt game, trying to do it. Talk to us about that. <clears throat> It's a different game. It's, it's so much like y'all game. You know, now, back then, you go to the hole in the playoffs you want to, you know, in basketball. Yeah, you, you, you're going to get... Right. You, Man, lay his yeah, ass you, out. You get put down. Yeah, you lay him out. And it was, it was respected. Now, you know, they can't get fouled, man. So it's the same thing in our game. Back then, man, you got cats like Lot and the, you know, the known hitters in the mm -hmm. game is just cleaning shop with you. The quarterbacks is going to get their heads taken off. Now you can't touch them. You can't... It's a whole different game, which I understand because... I'm not the kind of guy saying, man, these guys were better than us back then. Man, these dudes are bigger, stronger, and faster. And they have uh, different technology. They got different workouts. Everybody got a chef now. Mm -hmm. Everybody got home gyms. I mean, these guys are uh, ridiculous, man. I mean, the size and the physicality of them. You got receivers 220, 230 right now mm -hmm. running four threes, mm -hmm. man. We ain't had that bull junk back then. Mm -hmm. These some grown men out there playing this game. But it's a totally different game. The only difference is I don't think guys are playing with the mental capacity. They playing with athleticism. And back, back then, it was athletes as well as the mental part of it. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. So we feel the same. It's yeah. similar in basketball. Like, you have to understand people, 
don't want to see because Jack and I were both defenders. Jack had a lot of offensive game too, but we also prided ourselves on defense, you know, such as you. So oh it yeah. used to be a battle, used to be a war. People used to get knocked down. People used to get elbowed. Now as a part of the game. Now you can't touch anybody. You know what I mean? Okay, but right. you have to understand that they're selling a business. It's worldwide because of the Steph Curry shooting threes and, and these guys right. dunking. They don't want to see no, you know, Indiana, Detroit, defensive 87, 85 type games no more. So you have to evolve right. along with the game. Although we love and we miss that, just like you loved and missed the way you played, yeah. the game has to evolve. And if you can get stuck being one of them old players, like, oh, I don't like that shit because you just have to understand the evolution of both games. Man, you know what I don't like, man? I, I don't like this, fellas. Just because I like Jordan, that don't mean uh, I hate LeBron. Talk to him, man. Exactly. Just because Damn. I like LeBron, Preach. that don't mean I don't like Kawhi. I mean, why? It's Just because I say I like vanilla ice cream, that don't mean I don't like chocolate. Right, right. What, why, where, where we come from with this bull junk that we got to put another brother down just because yeah, we like another? Yeah, that don't make sense, man. Exactly. It's just my preference. It's, I, it's just my preference. I think the media plays a big part and, in that, too. You know what I mean? To create a narrative, create excitement, try to sell something. But fans don't understand that. Players don't fall for the shit, but the fans don't understand that, like, it's just a battle. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have mm -hmm. to, just because I respect his game don't mean I don't fuck with his game type shit. Right, right. But I'm going to tell you another thing we do as players. Back then, we was just balling. Y'all was just balling. Now they fishing for likes. They checking the web to see who liking them, see who hating on them. Folks ain't care back then. You just played the game, man. You just went and get, try, to, try, to, try to give it to them night after night. Now, you worried about who like you or who following you or who riding with you or how many followers you got. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of little childish bull junk I just don't understand, man. Hey, Hermit. Instead of focusing on what you putting on the floor or what you putting on the grass. Prime, Hermit, Hermit was told me, I was working at ESPN one, with, with him one day, and uh, he was like, Jack, my, I followed your career, I watched you. He's like, one thing I'm going to tell you about the game that I see, and he's not even in basketball. He said he sees this about basketball from, from the outside looking in. Most kids these days are interested and in, in, entertained about what the game can do for them, than they than actually loving the game. We didn't have yeah. none grow up, so we loved the game first. That's all we had was basketball. We, all we had was sports. So once we feel like we realized we can make money off it, okay, that's a different feeling. But we grew up having no choice but to love what we was doing first. And that's a big difference now. They more, in, they more interested man. in what the game can do for them. Man, you're absolutely right. And, 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 and Matt, when I see you outside on the court with your kids, mm -hmm. like, you outside. See, you you missing how large that is. You outside on the court with your kids. When the last time you seen some real cats outside playing basketball? Yep. Ain't nobody could play outside no more. Back in the day, man, we had down. Hey, man, I got next. And, and my other partner <laughs> coming. He's going to be here in five minutes. Yeah. All right? Come on, <laughs> it man. ain't nobody playing outside on, no more. Then, if you ain't picked this cat, he gonna go get a ball and bust it on the court, so nobody, nobody ain't gonna play. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> nobody ain't ain't nobody ain't playing the thing. And then this this little dude, I'm sorry to say another name, but he gonna take his ball and go home because he ain't get right. picked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so now he gotta get hooked. Uh, always one of them. <laughs> so I don't even see that, but when I see you outside, man, playing with your shorts, I'm like, now nah, that's basketball. That's how it was. But we shoot until the lights come yeah. on, man. The lights come on. Yeah. It's different. You know what yeah. I mean? They got so many. See, that's the era I grew up yeah, in, man. I'm saying, they got so much technology now, and we all came from nothing, so I didn't have. Sh Shit, I was from, no the, from training, the time no I, camp. I couldn't wait to get outside until the lights came on all day. Sometimes no lunch, sometimes find right. a way to go get a motherfucking 39 cent burger from McDonald's. But until the <laughs> lights came, I wasn't trying to be nowhere near the house. I could go like five or six neighborhoods away just remembering, okay, once I could see the sun start, I got to get closer because once my mom or my dad whistle, I got to be home. But it, it, yeah, it's not man. like that no more. Man, we was funky going to school because my bus stop just said that. walked three bus stops <laughs> over to play against this bus stop. And we funky because we playing touch, full touch, no full thing on the road before school at the bus stop. Our bus stop versus this Straight bus up. stop. And we had to go serve them, Straight man. Up. So that, that's how it used to right. be. Wait. Now everybody, you ain't working out unless you got to train them, unless you got a, a 707 But coach. we played, though. We uh, didn't even know, train, though. Like, we didn't coach. train. We played. We just played all the sports. Played. All different sports so Play. we never had time Play. to train in one area ever because we was always on to the next right. i played football baseball basketball and track in high school so
So I was from sport to sport to sport. You know what I mean? There was never no training. Like, I didn't train for yeah, basketball. Down, Football yeah. is my best sport. But I didn't train for basketball until I got to the NBA. You know what I mean? Like, I was just mm-hmm. all, okay, I was talk out to, there all Come part. on, man. Talk to me. Talk to me yeah. about football, man. So I know you play receiver. Yeah, football, you had yeah. To play receiver, right? I was the number one, uh, the, the number one receiver in the country my senior year. Had uh, 28 touchdowns. Wow. With, with a broken toe. I was I was chasing the, the the record, so I I it started as turf toe. I, you know how bad turf toe, so I had to cut my cleats oh, and everything. How you play with no broken toe? Played all the way through it, and it ended up being I ended up breaking it, shattering it, where they had to go in and remove pieces. Hey, so, wow. so that's when I went into UCLA. Why I didn't go out to play football my freshman year because I had a major back in the day like a Kaiser toe surgery. So the scars like this long, Jack. You oh, didn't see how fucked up God. my shit is. So my toe was messed hey, up, but we gonna compare. When I see you, we gonna compare toes. Oh toe. yeah, my my, <laughs> hey, my, hey, my shit my shit still look good though. They just don't work for nothing. Oh no, mine don't even look good, dog. I got one that sits so higher than the other one. I got one that sit up like that, dog. Yeah, that's how Jack. Jack do. Hey Jack, tell us how you used to be going to school, funky. What you were saying a minute ago. Nah, I was telling him. I was just telling him. I, I, I was pissing the beds. I was about nine. T. I used to wake. I used to wake. I used, I, I used to wake up with fresh clothes, Dion, fresh to the motherfucker, but still smelling like piss. <laughs> Go oh Lord. Oh, yeah, going he's to like school. my oldest son. He he used to pee the bed the same way, though. Hiding drawers. He hid drawers all over the house, man. When we draws. moved, I found drawers. I found drawers all over the house that he had these, man. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Hey, we want to uh, uh, we want to keep going in, but we want you to come in on the show, so we don't want to go too deep. So we gonna end, uh, we gonna give you a, you. A, a, a few more things. But once all this clears up, man, we gotta have you in the studio so man, we can reminisce man, about how you. important you, you are you to gotta, us. You ain't gotta fly me there. I'm coming. I'm coming on my own. Straight up, I'm good. Yeah, Straight yeah. up. I'm coming to see y'all, man. I'm coming to sit down and look face things. Y'all, y'all don't understand, man. Y'all moving the needle. You're challenging culture. And you, you're provoking change, man. And that's that's real talk. And I, I love that y'all keep it 100. Because, see, I'm saving some good questions I got for y'all. I because I <laughs> yeah. want to see your immediate... Yeah. I want to see the immediate response yeah, to what I want yes, to spit yeah. to y'all I mean, yeah, about. We can sit, I want to see the immediate We're going to have a good, long conversation with you. We're going to finish off with these two things. NBA, you said you're big on basketball. Who was your favorite team and player growing up? I didn't have a favorite team. Okay. But I had a favorite player. Uh, Dr. J was my guy. Irving. He, 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 was, he was a doctor. He was called a doctor and he didn't have a PhD. You talking about a brother that was smooth. <laughs> brother that was suave. Brother that was a player of all players. Yeah. Oh, yeah you know, still hey, still the doc, still still to the still. doc, hey, doc was so For cold. Life. Doc was so cold back in the day, man, that, that, he took the imagination of a young young cat from Fort Myers, Florida, man, and I, I just I just loved everything about the duck, how he carried himself on the field and off the field, and how people perceived him, how what they saw when they saw him. I, I loved it. So he was my guy. He was my guy going up. But see, I didn't really have a team that I like because I, I just like certain guys and I like things they brought to the table, man. Mm-hmm. And you know, magic was magic, magic back then. Magic was magic. You know that that whole thing with them and the. the Pistons and then with Bird and the Celtics. I wasn't a big Celtics uh, fan back then, but I love the way they competed, mm-hmm, man. Play hard. I love their teamwork. You ain't gonna like that. Yes, God, they played hard. Yeah. So it was, it was so many different guys. And the Ice Man, George Gerber, come on, like, come on, man. The yeah. Ice Man, that's the coldest picture ever made, wasn't it? Uh-huh. It's the coldest poster yeah, I think bro. ever to go down in history yeah, when the Ice Man, man. man that, was that some player stuff, man? Yeah, ice Man sitting player. up there. Man, that was super player. So I, I I was in that era, man, and I love those cats. Nice. So current NBA uh, players, and in, 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 uh, do you follow teams? Uh, yeah, I, I'm crazy about Braun. You know, I love what I, I want to interview Braun for CBS when he was in high school. And I remember some of the top analysts, basketball analysts at the time, was hating on him, talking about he wasn't this, he wasn't that, and why he should, why he had a Hummer H2 in high school. And I remember being on national TV, I said, a Hummer, y'all tripping about a Hummer? Any bank will get his kid's mother any credit line they want because he's about to make a mm-hmm. hundred times he signs his name and you tripping about a Hummer? You should be happy he ain't getting a Bentley or a Rose <laughs> right. or, or, or something. Mm-hmm. But I knew, I went to interview him when he was in high school and he had it. When you got it, you, you, you recognize it. Y'all got it. So y'all recognize it when you see it. This cat had it for a long time. Long time. I, 
I, man, I love what Vince has given to the game. Vince Carter's a Florida boy. I, I, I love cats, what they've done for the game and how Vince, I mean, Vince was that. God, Vince. That's the best in-game dunker ever. I think I've ever seen in my life. Ever. Yes, yes. Ever. Yes, in-game ever, for sure. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, so it's so many cats that, uh, Jay Crossover, man. I mean, come Shout on, man. How's he yeah. not in the game right now? Shout out Jamal Crawford, man. How's he not in the game? We need you. We, uh, How's he not in the game? Crazy. That hurts my feelings. That hurt my feelings to see him not out there. And the Lakers bullshit. Did he, what did he drop? 46 and 50, 50 his last game? 50. 50? How you drop 50 your last time on the court and you can't, can't get, get back chance. on the court? Crazy. Tied for the most yeah, six-man so, wars of the year. Yeah, Crazy. man. So it's a lot of cats that, that I love. I love them real cats, man. I love what y'all brought to the game, dog. Let me tell you. Hey, I told Stack. I told Stack, man. I was a fan. They came here, man, when, when he played for Golden State, dog. You talking about whooping the Mavericks, man. Mm -hmm. They physically punked the Mavericks, man. Mm -hmm. And Stack was getting buckets. I mean, you, you, they, they had a whole team of dogs. And they was just, you know... You know, you know, man. man you know, man, that man, 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 Matt was the leaders out the kennel and everybody just followed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but man, 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 man. yeah, but y'all, y'all was different though, man. Y'all, y'all yeah. had, y'all didn't, first of all, y'all didn't care. Right. Nah, and we, it wasn't no, y'all respected the game, but on the court, it wasn't no respect to play it. Like, nah, hey, come on. Nah, we didn't give a and fuck. What y'all did, man. Dog, what y'all did to the Mavericks that series, man, it was We took was that laughable. hard. We came in and got it. We came. <laughs> no, no, it did. Because you got to think. It they did, had, and it was laughable. They had, what, they had 63 saw, wins that year. They were the number one team in the West. We came in and took game one, and we knew it was over. We knew it. Yeah, but, man, the way y'all did it, though, man, I mean, y'all, it was like it was like the hood playing against downtown Dallas, man. It was like, <laughs> come on, man. BD, BD, I, BD, Baron Davis was on one. Baron Davis oy, was on one. Hey, boy, let, just, man, let me tell you something, man. BD was a bad boy, man. A oh, man, Ooh, people don't understand. BD was how, a bad what, boy. Barring injury, he would have been one of the greatest point guards ever, no question. Yeah, but in every position and coming off the bench, y'all had dogs. Y'all had some mm -hmm. nasty dudes that, that was giving you both ends. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they weren't giving you both ends, they was some heck of a role players. Yeah. Right. Everybody played their role. Right. They ain't step outside their role. And I saw all that, man, but shoot. I mean, I, I love that series, man. Yeah. I, that's one of my favorite series. And I tell Stack every time I talk to him and see yeah. him, man, that, yeah. that there was unbelievable. We got, a do man. we got a documentary coming out about that team, the We Believe team. See, that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about off camera because yeah. I want to know everybody. I want to know the personalities of everybody oh, yeah. on yeah. that team. Yeah. Like, tell yeah. me, who this dude was for real? Right. Who was this dude was real? <laughs> and, who was the first And one? everybody was somebody. That was the team that everybody liked. So we yeah. was going hard on and off the court, and it was the whole team. <laughs> the whole team. <laughs> the whole team. On and off court. You know what? I, I, it's the trip about basketball because I know some basketball players and they've told me some stories. I love, like, athletic stories. Like, I don't understand how you ain't got but 12 or 15 cats, you know, in the locker room on, a, on a, an organization, and you got three different cliques. How does that it happen? don't work. So when I hear that, I yeah, know, but when I hear that y'all was a whole, one team, you're owning off the court, I love it. Because nowadays, it's two or three different can't cliques. Like, this dude, got he got three cats to roll with him. Okay, he got four cats to roll with him. And these other kids, they, the other cats, they just in the middle. Mm -hmm. They don't know which way they want to mm -hmm. go. How does that work, man? The, war, the, war, the Warriors was different. That was the only team that I've been on my whole career where I was in at least two or three people weddings on my team. That's how close we were. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I, I, can, I, I can say I was actually in the wedding. There's groomsmen as three people on that team in that wedding. So that's, that's how close our team was. Still man, close to this day. We still talk man. to each other all to this day. <clears throat> to this day. Yeah, y'all was nasty, man. Y'all was nasty too, man. We gonna I, got, I, got a, I, I got a beggar second. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, shit. We know we, we normally have a bag in segment, Prime, where I ask, you know, for stuff. I, I got some shoes from Kobe and everybody else. Prime, I've been looking for two things, and I know that? you can find them. I need a cowboy jersey and the first Dion Nikes with the strap on top. Now, I, I know you got a pad in the closet. No, see, I'm an I'm a unnumber guy. I'm an unnumber guy, and I've been there for like 13, 14 years when I flipped. So I know I don't have those now. You make a call to that company, and I'm pretty sure. Tracy Teague, I'm going to give you a name, and I guarantee you, he could come up with something. Tracy Teague. Because, 
Yeah, Tracy Teague, like T E A G V. Okay. He we we designed those things together collectively. Um, this is the first class. Jersey, that, that's a done deal. This is the first begging segment. I, I, I'm in this begging segment too. This is gonna be my my, my entrance. I ain't never asked nobody for nothing, wow, but I need. Wow, you're entering the begging yeah. segment for the first time. Yes. Yeah. I need Welcome. a. Uh, I need a San Francisco Dion and then them same shoes. So we gonna exchange information <laughs> offline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need the San Francisco version of them. You yeah, need, that's you, what you I need, need the white, yeah, the white and red. Never, the white and red. I ain't, I ain't never even classic, I, boy. I ain't never yeah. jumped in Jack's begging segment. This is the first time, but fuck that. We fuck with even prime Braun, time right even now. Even Braun had to do a collab. Braun had to do a collab with your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, he did a tight one too, man. Yeah, that was nice. He did a tight one too. Things was nice. We gonna leave with yeah, this. We, we, People don't uh, understand that you played in the NFL and the uh, in the NFL and Major League Baseball, and on a particular date, October eleventh, nineteen ninety two. Talk to me about that day. Good cranberry October 11th, juice. Nineteen ninety two. Grab berries, you know. Man, you, that, see, see, that's one thing I can't wait to talk to y'all about. Like, you know, I've never drank or smoked yeah, in my life. Yeah, I know. You know I know. You know I know. But, hey, but but I want to talk to y'all about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So when I get yeah, there, yeah. Uh, October 11th, yeah. October 11th. What was that, the two sports yes, in one sir. day? Was that that yeah. day? I, I love my football teammates so much. And back then, I was just, baseball was just using me to, you know, come in and pinch run, pinch hit, do all that stuff later because my contract actually ended in June. So I would come over and help baseball just off the strength that, that those are my guys. When the playoffs, I'm going to come and help you. But the dilemma was I had a full-time football contract and baseball was trying to make it look like I'm, I'm dogging them. Like, how am I dogging you? I, my contract been over since June. So I'm coming over to help my guys. And there was the two sports in one day and I had already told them what I was going to do. And they tried to make me Seemed like I was the selfish one, the egotistical one. I, I'm not trying to play two sports in one day. You ain't even let me get into the darn baseball game, first of all. And we playing against Marino. We yeah. playing against Marino. Yeah. And you gonna let think I'm gonna leave that secondary without me against Dupa Clayton and Nat Moore? You ain't lost your mind, man. <laughs> so I had to get that for my guy. I'm gonna tell you what, that was one of the saddest moments of my athletic career. And one of the most uh, gratifying. Like, Flying in there, and when the cats actually saw me get on the bus the next morning, dog, when my Falcon team saw me get on that darn bus that morning, and they just start clapping, man, like my dog made it him. I sat in that seat, man, and I cried some weird tears, man, mm -hmm. because I knew I had done the right thing. And after the game, I was so exhausted mentally and emotionally, because, you know, I was getting hammered for doing the right thing, man. I got hammered publicly doing what was right by my teammates. And I flew back, made it to the baseball game. They ain't think about putting me in. I mean, everybody could have got kidnapped off the team. They still would have, they would have forfeited. They was not going to put me in that day. And I said, cool, we're straight. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So it got down to the series. We playing against the uh, with Blue Jays, I believe. And David Cohn is playing. I'm batting like 700 off David Cohn lifetime. And baseball is about analytics. So you can't justify not putting me in in David Cohn pitching. And to this day, I thank God for David Cohn because I would have never played in the World Series had he not pitched. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in and, 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 did, and did, did the dog thing. Thing. Mm, Did his thing too That's a, Did my thing did No, We're going we to dive into yeah. who you really were Because I, I think it, it's unfortunate You know, Maybe this situation uh, Obviously crazy and unfortunate Is giving people a chance to watch older games And really have an appreciation Because yeah. I really feel like this current climate doesn't respect well, and I can't speak for everybody, but a majority, it's more right. of what have you done for me lately. So I, I think for basketball, for football, you're getting to see people such as yourself and do what you do and forget. I, I just think we forget how amazing, you know, the, the, the people that paved the way for, for us are. So I think it's, it's great. But we're going to really dive into that when you come in, sit down and rock with us, man. But we really want to thank man, you. I, I can't wait, man. Thank man, you, OG, I appreciate man. We appreciate and, you, man. Hey. hey. I'm, I'm going to say this for Stack more so than this. Stack. I love you. I appreciate you. I want you to stay on TV. I want you to, So every now and then, just break it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Be yeah. you. Yeah. I Be you. That. But you. we can't. Dog, we can't lose you. Yes, sir. Straight up. We, we can't lose That's you, dog. Because your voice is real, dog. So, you know, I know. 
We, we got to <laughs> keep it 100. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know we got to keep it 100. Yeah. But we need you, dog. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, man, keep on doing what you're doing, man. I'm you. riding with you, man. Yeah. You know, we all been going through the same old bull junk. That's you why you know. know God chose you, man. Yeah. Because no matter what you're going through, you're coming through the fire. Smelling you know, like man. smoke. Make you better. All the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Smelling like all the smoke. But but we making it. You know, but you know. we making yes, it. Sir. All right? Yes, sir. Hey, man, I love y'all brothers man, to the life, man. Yeah. man. We appreciate you. I'm yeah. straight up, man. man straight that's up. A wrap. I got you. That's legendary, but he going to be back. He's going to come in the studio. We're going to really chop it up. But thank you for this special. Edition. Say what's up to y'all right office. here with our brother doing? Deion Sanders. Hope you guys enjoy this. Everyone stay safe. Nephew, God what's bless. up, nephew? What's up, nephew? Nothing much, nothing much. I call him 94. I need it back right hey, there. He like a 94 hey, crowd. I need this side jersey now. Before time. <laughs> and we go, uh, hey, hey, me, hey, me and Jack gonna come to one of his games next year. Man, come on, dog. Yeah. I got you. We gonna come, come on, on the sideline come fuck on. with y'all. Yeah. All right, man, that's All a wrap. Right. Well, you. next time I'm in LA, I'm definitely calling, yeah, man. Come on, we get out to know. do this. That's a wrap. Yes, sir. Much love, fellas. Dion, Appreciate thank y'all, you. man. You can catch all the smoke streaming on all platforms, streaming podcasts. All of them. Showtime Basketball YouTube. We out of here, baby. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.